You'll remember the big events of the 2010s, so I won't go over them again. Suffice to say that by the end of that decade, the Scots were once more rebellious. They felt cheated by what they saw as empty promises around the 2014 referendum. The UK government seemed to take the light and widen them up. So when the rebellious Scots managed to get a second referendum in the new decade, an independent Scotland was created. And after the party, that's when their problems began. Having been denied the chance to thwart Scottish independence, all that was left for Westminster to do was to make sure it didn't work. And talks with the EU stalled. So Scotland looked around for a friend, and that friend was China. China already had huge investments in Scotland, and all that remained was to wrap that up. Which was fine, but there seemed to be side effects. Scotland was already well aware of the disinformation and hate circulating on social media, how Scotland was failing. So Holyrood brought in restrictions on the use of all those forums and introduced us to the much safer and nicer ScotChat, a version of the Chinese WeChat app. This way the government could check everything that its citizens were up to. Many of us saw this as a creeping destruction of personal privacy so a group of us formed a network to try to subvert it. Of course, after the terrorist shootings at the Hilton Hotel in Glasgow, there was a massive increase in government surveillance. We had suspicions about that attack, though. We tracked down a police officer who had been there and might have had a story to tell, but he just disappeared. Other people had disappeared too. We needed someone who could check whether they were in any Scottish prison. Lexi knew someone. So let me tell you the story of poor Harry Campbell and the chaos that was undeservedly unleashed on him.